I'm Javier Grisari, assistant professor in the School of Building Construction. And uh, the work that uh, we've been working on that was funded partly by the GTF grant that we received uh, is uh, looking at the uh, situation awareness approach uh, to the architecture, engineering, and construction, and, and facility management uh, decision support uh, system design. So uh, this is what I would like to uh, tell you about the project that we've been working on. Uh, why we chose the facility management area as a test bed for, for this project. Uh, I'll explain the concept of situation awareness uh, and then some of the areas that this concept has been applied. Um, and then uh, I'll uh, tell you a little bit about applying the concept of situation awareness to the area of facility management. Uh, I'll tell you what methodology we use, the goal-directed uh, task analysis and, and what that entails uh, and then uh, what we did to apply that method to, to the area of facility management in our study. Uh, I'll briefly go over some of the results, uh, some conclusions of this part of the study and what are the next steps and, and what we're working on next. So uh, why we chose uh, facility management as a, as a test bed, uh, we, we realized that facility managers work in a very complex and dynamic environment. Uh, buildings are like living creatures that have to be taken care of uh, from, uh, from their uh, conception uh, through their decommissioning. So, so it's, a, it's a very uh, dynamic environment with a lot of, uh, a lot of problems. Um, the facility manager, as, as we see uh, the profession, should be capable of uh, having an accurate mental picture of the environment that, that they have and all the challenges that they have to face. Um, they need to be able to understand all the uh, goals that, that entail their, um, uh, their, their job uh, in order to come up with the most acceptable decisions uh, to maintaining the facility. Uh, we also believe that situation awareness can help these professionals uh, to, to understand what their specific information needs are and, and how uh, to better address the decisions using the, the required information. Um, the uh, outcome of, of the process of applying situation awareness to, to this profession uh, is a hierarchical situation awareness graphic that will give the, uh, the developers of, of future systems an idea about how to better provide information to the people that need to make decisions in this field. So with that, um, I'll uh, briefly introduce the concept of situation awareness. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, comes from the human factors uh, domain and, and has to do with uh, how uh, people cognitively process information and basically make decisions. So uh, think of it as, as an engine uh, that drives the decision-making performance of, of the user of, of that information in very complex and dynamic environments. So. Uh, there's three hierarchical uh, phases to this process. The first one is where the person or, or the user has to perceive the information or, or the elements of the situation around them. Then they have to comprehend, uh, basically make sense of that information, process it in their minds, and then they have to project what the uh, outcomes or the, the results of their decisions will be into the future. So it's a cognitive process that goes through those uh, three steps. So where has this been applied uh, before and, and why we became interested in this uh, method uh, to apply to AC plus FM and we started with facility management? Uh, this is a concept that has been applied in the military. So you know, think about uh, military uh, operations where you have uh, different, um, different uh, war fighters, uh, if you will, and they receive a lot of different information that they have to process in order to, to make decisions on where to take supplies, where to take uh, strike forces, etc. cetera. So, so that's uh, one of, of those areas. The second one is aviation, where uh, the main goal of uh, the pilot in that case is to basically take off and land uh, safely. So they, they receive all this information from traffic control, uh, their navigation charts, and they have to process all that information in order to navigate from point A to B and do that in a safe manner. Uh, and in healthcare, it has been also used to make sure that, uh, for example, nurses and doctors communicate the right information at the right time to avoid costly mistakes by, uh, for example, giving someone 
the drug that they were not supposed to get. So, so that is um, the motivation to use this. Uh, it's, it's mainly from the military application. Uh, we, we think that the ACFM field is, is kind of like a war. You know, it's, it's a war uh, against cost, against time, uh, against failure rates of equipment in buildings. So we have to basically manage all the resources that we can to accomplish the goals of the mission, which are to construct facilities on time, on budget, and maintain them at the lowest cost possible and, and the best, providing the best environment for users. So uh, in facility management, how uh, we thought about addressing those challenges, uh, recognizing that it's a very complex environment that has a lot of information that the facility manager has to uh, process to make decisions on equipment replacement, uh, equipment purchases, and, and other things, uh, and then uh, reach the optimal decisions that will uh, achieve their goals of their mission. Um, uh, but uh, we, we don't uh, clearly understand uh, what are all the pieces of information that, that they'll have to process and, and uh, also what uh, types of decisions they have to make. So for that, uh, we are applying uh, this, this method in order to provide facility managers with a filter that would give them the right information at the right time, taking advantage of technology in order to make uh, appropriate decisions. So this is uh, the method that we use is called the cognitive directed uh, task or the goal directed cognitive task analysis uh, developed by Ainsley. And it has uh, these four uh, steps in which the first one is the user has to identify uh, or we have to identify the key decision makers in the facility management environment while well, it's the facility manager. Uh, then we have to identify the major goals and associated sub goals for that, that uh, person, then identification of the primary decisions uh, that are needed to accomplish each of those sub goals that will uh, contribute to the main goal, um, and then uh, identify the situation awareness information uh, requirements that the user will need to be able to make those decisions. So, what we did is we uh, did a uh, structured interview, there were one-on-one -on -one interviews with six facility managers uh, in the Atlanta metropolitan area. Uh, those are considered subject matter experts because of their uh, experience and level of knowledge in the area. Um, they were about an hour uh, long conversations and the result of those conversations are called the hierarchy charts. And the hierarchy charts are basically uh, flow charts that describe what the main goal of the position, or, or in this case, the facility manager uh, role is, and then all the sub goals that would help them to accomplish the mission of the main goal, and then all the pieces of information that contribute to those sub goals. So, um, talking a little bit about the results, uh, we, we found that uh, the main uh, goal for uh, the facility manager in this case summarized here is to manage the facility uh, with uh, safety and productivity in mind. Safety for the users and productivity for the users, but also productivity of the resources that are employed. Um, and then there's all these other sub goals like monitoring activities within the facility, determining facility needs, managing facility resources, and below that, then we would find all the pieces of information that would contribute uh, to them being able to make those decisions. Uh, and for example, uh, a little uh, more broken down, the, the goal of, a uh, sub goal of monitoring activities within the facility are described here. If we take, for example, uh, the uh, information or the situation <coughs> awareness requirements they have to ask themselves a question to facility managers understand the contracts uh, to get the best value services uh, which they are contracting for. So they have to get all these pieces of information including the uh, previous uh, contracts, determine the total scope of the contracts, clarify price ranges, and take all that information and process it in order to answer this question and accomplish that sub goal. So, so this is the, the, the process. So, uh, in, in conclusion uh, of this stage of the, of the research, uh, we find that um, 
situation awareness and, and its application to the facility management field uh, has the potential to enhance uh, the ambient awareness or, or being aware of the critical pieces of information that they'll need to get a hold of to be able to make uh, the appropriate decisions. <laughs> Uh, if they know what the key uh, goals uh, of their position are and apply those situation awareness uh, concepts, then they'll be able to, to make uh, those decisions uh, efficiently. And the last one uh, is that uh, this methodology uh, is appropriate to develop human computer interfaces that will allow facility managers to access the information that they need to make those important decisions. Um, so what are the, the next steps? Uh, currently, we're working on a project called InfoSpot. And what we're doing is we're uh, looking at the application of uh, augmented reality for assessing billing information that would help uh, enhance uh, the situation awareness of facility managers. Um, it's a, it's a uh, low cost, uh, complete augmented reality solution, self-contained uh, in, in a mobile device, and, and we brought uh, an example of the prototype that we're working on. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a mobile application that will track the user's position, and the user will be able to, through augmented reality, look at information in their environment about the different uh, objects that are included. Um, and we're doing it at this point with survey observation points, uh, or SOPs, uh, where the user would have to stand in order to geolocate themselves in reference to everything uh, else um, in, the, in the space. So this is uh, what uh, one version of it uh, looks like. And what this is is, is um, this virtual reality uh, model version, which the facility manager can use from any room in the facility. And basically panning around, he would look at all the information that, or the, all the objects that are uh, included in that space. And by touching uh, one of those objects, then the information about the object will come up. So the information that is provided to the facility manager through, through this interface comes from the results of applying the goal-directed task analysis and the situation awareness approach to develop this interface and the information that is provided by the application. And with that, uh, I thank you very much for your attention.